Millennium Development Goal 7 has got this immense footprint, ensure environmental sustainability. Knowing my science, my hydrology originally, it doesn't really matter at all. Um, understanding what society thinks is much more important. Um, trying to understand the political landscape into which some good idea, such as environmental sustainability or uh, water resource uh, sustainability, is going to be put. And today we've had a remarkable absence of, of that. I mean, there's been a hint that you know, we're stealing scientists from other parts of the world, and um, uh, uh, John has just made a bit of a reference to policy, but otherwise it's been extremely technical. So if all of us in Bloomsbury, and we are just a tiny proportion of the people that could have been here today, are <laughs> um, so heavily focused on thinking about you know, what's in our, uh, in our silo, um, can I just ask us to think a bit outside that. So let's, let's see where we're going to get to. Um, there's lots of water in the world and it's not wh where it's needed, um, unfortunately. The, the point, <coughs> this is an excellent article in um, the August Scientific American uh, in which it demonstrates a number of things that water is, can be either green, that is in the vegetation or the soil, or it can be blue uh, flowing in the rivers or in the groundwater or uh, shifting out to sea at the end of its cycle through the system. The water we need for drinking is tiny. The water we need for keeping clean is not so tiny, but um, not very big. The water we need for food is, is the big stuff. Um, so if we're short of water, it is normally we're short of water for food, not for... It's very rare to be short for drinking, except we don't have the technologies or the techniques to put it in place. Water isn't actually short for these small volumes of water needed for drinking and keeping clean. We just don't have the capacities, which is why, of course, you've got the MDGs to try to raise the priority. But just to uh, illustrate that, this is the uh, you can, Americas, Africa, you can see the, the world is there. This is a, a graphic indicating the water use by individuals for domestic use per head. And you can see uh, Canada and the United States are pretty big, and Iceland's big, and Ireland's big, and the UK is not so big. But um, you can see the, the different countries, but Africa is the message. You can see that Africa doesn't use very much water for the domestic, the domestic purposes. Um, whereas, you see, know, Africa does its share of consuming water for food. Uh, just to give an idea of the proportions of water used uh, by, on average, when I first dreamed up my virtual water idea, I said, we need about, a th well, I've given you the numbers, 1,000, 100 to 1. So that means we need each person about uh, 1,100 plus our jobs we need. So let's about 1,200. If they're short of water, which most countries in the world are, such as the UK, um, the, um, we can import the water both embedded in food, that's the virtual water, 1,000 tons of water to grow a, thousand, to, to grow a ton of grain, 1,000 cubic meters of water a ton of grain. If you import a ton of grain, you don't have to find the water. Um, and of course, that's not so important here, but of course it's very important in many, many, many dry countries. And then there are industrial products imported too. So that's the average. But um, the, uh, a, a, a typical African country, you can see that it's, uh, the average as we saw is about the same, as we saw on the, the big global maps, it's about the same one, 1127 approximately meters cubed per capita per year, but very little import, um, but a, a very substantial use of local water for, for food. India has a bit of trade, uh, uh, a smaller footprint by 980 cubic, cubic meters per year. Brazil trades more, um, and the United States, uh, you know, when we're talking, we're now in the, this is the first um, MDG where you know, we really should search our souls because if the United States uses 2,000, uh, twice in fact, the average footprint, then um, there's something that could be done about that, uh, especially since the energy footprints are uh, multiples of this. Chinese demographic policy has taken 300 million people out of the global economy, that's 5% of the world's population, and obviously a much higher percentage of its own population. You can see how that's, if you're looking for reasons why the Chinese numbers are better, <laughs> it's because they've done something um, not intended to do anything about the water M MDG, but they've, they've done something ha by having a demographic policy which has reduced the demand for water quite spectacularly. 
300 million, the whole population of old Europe, nearly the population of the United States, the population of the present Middle East is not there. Thank goodness for China and India. Uh, China has got a brutal demographic policy. India, um, they're mainly vegetarians. If you're a vegetarian, you only eat, uh, you only use about two and a half cubic meters of water a day. If you're a non-vegetarian, like many in North America and many in Europe, and you do it you know, to the full, it's five cubic meters a day. So again, the magic um, demand management thing that could be done, or policy that could be implemented but can't be, well, except one can project the idea as a good idea, become vegetarians, down from five to 2.5. Uh, and in that way, he will have a dramatic impact on the demand for water. There are four ways of life, four ways of knowing. If there are any social theorists in the room, they may reject this, but I found it massively helpful in my bumbling, trying to understand how to get things understood in the political world of trying to change <coughs> behavior over water. So we've got the civil society, that's us at breakfast time, in a neoliberal uh, system. 45% of us go to work in government or government institutions, such as you mainly do. 45% go to work in the private sector, and some go to work in the uh, civil movements and NGOs, and a lot of people are perhaps not employed. Uh, it's a feature of the neoliberal system that you know, that's the way it is, no matter what Reagan or Thatcher tries to do, it defaults to this rough position. Uh, so the people over on the far side like to be free and without control. The people over here are controlling people. These know best with power. These know best without power. Um, and interestingly, this idea was in place long before .gov.org.com came along, so there must be something rather fundamental about it. So we've got lots of institutions in place, in the yellow place there, taxes, laws, pensions, um, um, uh, salaries, uh, and uh, <laughs> even the welfare state, put in place over centuries of blood and sweat and, and pain and treasure. Over here, we've got the market, and obviously jobs and pensions and advertising. But the people that change things, and this is my point, the people that change things are people who <coughs> not only uh, have a good idea, but they want to communicate it, the people that are in the NGO. So tomorrow when I go to WaterAid, I'm going to be humble and uh, uh, bow to them and tell them what a wonderful set of people they are, because they not only get on and do the job, they've learned how to do it, and they're extraordinary advocates as well. We must expect the political landscape to be determining, and water consumers are embedded in this landscape, and we must expect also there to be different types of, of governance. So the, the sort of governance that we've seen, the neoliberal sort, is the one that we're used to having here, and I've switched the, the three... That, well, the difference between government, which is that, and governance, which is that. Have you heard that in the neat definition? It's... Helpful. The world is on track to meet the target of halving the proportion of people without access to safe drinking water by 2015. The share of people using drinking water from improved sources has continued to rise in the world. However, in current trends, sub-Saharan Africa will not meet the target. This is due to factors such as high population growth. It's not China. It's going to double in population. And they're mainly going to be poor people. Uh, low government expenditure, particularly on operation and maintenance conflicts and political instability. So the, the governance thing isn't in place. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a not able to move from, uh, well, it doesn't have all the advantages of having good governance. Many of these um, MDGs are linked. Uh, wouldn't it be good if the health people and the water people thought along similar lines and were talking to each other all the time? Because clearly, if you're going to have health, you need to have the water services in place. So the key messages, um, sub-Saharan Africa remains an area of the greatest concern. Um, the, um, despite all the progress, the number of people with access is, is uh, increasing.